Hey, Mr. Maestas, back here again in front of the screen instead of uh, on a computer. So, here we go with volumes with known cross sections. So, what we're basically doing, I drew, I drew this picture here to kind of illustrate uh, what we're doing with these types of problems. So, if you can imagine, this is my y-axis and x-axis and I'm like, like it's like, like flat, okay, it's like this, okay? And I've got a curve on here like uh, y equals, you know, negative x squared or some sort of function. And on that function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put little slices, all right, I'm going to put little slices of um, some sort of cross section, some sort of little, like, like, uh, like little volume of something, um, some three-dimensional object, like, uh, you know, maybe it's a, it's a square cross section where this part right here, the face of that is a square. Or maybe I do uh, triangles like this. Or maybe I do a right triangle so it goes up like this and it only goes down. And it creates this three-dimensional object in which I can take the volume of if I took each one of those little, like, tiny, tiny slices. They're called cross sections. It's like if you took bread and you, just, you know, you took a slice of bread and you've got, you know, bread's an example of something with cross sections. You've got a whole loaf and you've got cross sections of the bread. So that's what this is. It's, it's got little slices in it, and what we're going to do is we're going to take um, the, these, these little slices that have a thickness of dx, and we're going to take these and we're going to add them all together. So we're, base, we're, we're adding all these, air, these slices up, um, and we're going to add all the volumes of that to have the volume of the whole figure, um, and that's called a volume of a figure with known cross sections because we're going to know what that section is. It might be a, a circle, I'm, I'm sorry, it might be a semicircle, it might be a, a square, whatever it is, uh, we'll know because the problem will tell us. So how do we find that volume? Well, if you think about how to find the volume of a, uh, any type of three-dimensional object like a, a cylinder or a, or a box or something like that, we learned a long time ago, not in calculus, but a long time ago you learned that the volume is the area of the base times its height. Whatever the figure is, except if, it's come to a, if it comes to a point, like a cone. Um, otherwise, uh, if it's some sort of solid, you can take the area of the base and multiply by the height. So, that's essentially what we're going to do. Except in calculus, we're going to consider the, the height of that three-dimensional object, the thickness, and we're going to call that dx. So dx is the thickness. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to find the area of the base. Okay, the area of the base is going to be whatever this area is here. And usually it's going to be um, the distance from here to the x-axis, or the distance from there to the y-axis as, as part of my um, my areas, because you know, so you can see these areas change as we go along, right? So, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to multiply that area, so whatever that area is, I'm going to multiply it by my thickness. And then I'm going to take the integral of that, because I'm going to sum up all of those guys from A to B. And that basically is the basic idea of what we're going to do each time when we're doing known cross sections. In fact, when we get to distant watch, it's the same idea. Area of the base, times the height, which is dx. So I have here the formulas. Uh, here are some common formulas for known cross sections. We've got squares, rectangles, and semicircles, triangles, and equilateral triangles. Those happen uh, most often on, in AP Calculus. If we're looking at, at the cross section that's perpendicular to the x-axis, then our area formula is going to be in terms of x. If we're looking at the cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis, then our, form, our area equation, our area function here is going to be in terms of y, so d, a, a sub y dy, okay? Let me get back to you and we'll do a few examples. I'll be right back. All right, here we go. First example, um, I nearly wiped it off with my shirt. Okay, volume of a solid whose base is a triangle bounded by y equals negative 2x minus 2, x equals 0, y equals 0, so we've got this area here, and we have square cross sections. So basically what's going to happen is, we're going to make the, uh, we're going to have a volume, we're going to stack up squares on top of this, okay? So this right here 
is going to be where that square is going to come from. So this is basically the base of that square. And that square is going to be base times base, so it's base squared, right? That's the area. So what is this area? The area, see it's each of those is changing, right? So the area of this is going to be S squared. And in this case, S or B, in my case, this is S, is going to be negative 2x plus 2, because it goes from the x-axis to that function. So negative 2x plus 2 squared. That's the area of the cross-section. So my integral is going to go from 0 to 1 of that area there, so negative 2x plus 2 squared times dx. All right. So then all I've got to do here now is do the integral of that. So this is a uh, reverse chain rule. So I'm going to need um, I'm going to need a negative one half to clear this out. Okay. Actually, I got these in backwards here. So negative negative one half here, and a negative two to be my hook when I take the derivative of that. So then I'm going to have negative 2x plus 2 cubed times negative 1 half times 1 third, evaluated from 0 to 1, which is going to give me, I'm going to put 1 in here, um, that's going to give me 0 minus negative one-sixth times, so I got my work here, eight. Okay, so then we got our answer right there. Okay, so don't forget this is a minus and a minus, so, you know, if I want to, if I want, I can, I can put plus eight-sixth, okay? So that would be the answer, um, Q, units cubed, I guess, since we're talking about volume, units cubed. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Set up the integral of the volume of the solid with the same base. So we have the same base here. Uh, but instead of having square cross sections, I'm going to have per I'm going to have semicircular cross sections. Okay, so the area, the area this time is one half pi r squared, right? So r is now, now what's going to happen is r is going to be here, and we're going to have like a semicircle like that. So this actually this is not this is not r. We have if we have semicircles like this, right? Then this distance from here to here is really the diameter. So I got to divide that by two, right? So my area is going to be one half pi negative two x plus two divided by two squared. So it looks like my integral for this is going to be the integral from zero to one of the area which was here. Negative, so 1 half pi negative x plus 1, I'm simplifying this guy right here, squared dx. And that will be my integral. I'm not going to really, I'm not going to integrate that, I only want to set it up, okay? So, again, really, it's, it's really about looking at the area formula so you can put that in your integral, okay? I'll be right back with a couple more examples. All right, here we go again. Sorry, I apologize for this long video, but there's a lot to go over with cross sections, okay? So let's take a look at the uh, function y equals negative x squared plus 2 um, and y equals x. So the area bounded between them and we're looking for the with rectangular cross sections of height 1 fourth perpendicular to the x axis. And what I'm going to do here is I'm only going to set these last ones up. Um, we're not going to actually integrate them through. Okay. So how am I going to set this up? Well, I do need to know where they intersect because I'm just looking at that area, okay? So I need to set them equal to one another, negative x squared plus 2 equals x, and I have to solve for um, okay, hold on. x squared plus x minus 2. I have to solve for x, all right? plus 2 minus 1, so I get x equals negative 2, x equals 1, and that's my limit to integration. Okay, so I'm going to go from negative 2 to 1, and what, what's my area? My, if this is my base and I'm doing rectangles, these rectangles are a height of 1 fourth. So this, this is its base, and the height goes out this way, 1 fourth. So the base is going to be 
um, the top one minus the bottom one because it's this is this is it right here, right? So we're going to go negative x squared plus two minus x times one fourth. That's my area. So again, my area here is one fourth times that's the height. That's the um, the height, right? Base times height, and the base is going to be negative x squared plus two minus x. That's a different distance in between these two right here. So I'm going to go one fourth negative x squared plus two minus x dx, and this is my integral. Okay. Let's take a look at these last ones here. X squared plus one. I'm sorry, x squared plus y squared equals 1 is a circle, and I want to know um, if I have an equilateral triangle base, what are the cro these cross sections are going to be perpendicular to the y-axis, what is my integral going to look like for this? So, I've got to go the integral, and what I'm going to do is, these are perpendicular to the y-axis, so they're going to go, this is a uh, circle with a radius of 1, so I'm going to go from negative 1 to 1. And I need to know what the area, these are equilateral triangles. So equilateral triangles, the area formula for that was square root of 3 over 4 times s squared. So what is s? The equilateral triangle is going to kind of look like that, right? s is its base. Well, x is the distance from there to there. So s is actually 2x, okay? So we've got to solve for x here. So x there is going to be uh, the square root of 1 minus y squared. So my s is my size, my base of that equilateral triangle is 2 times square root of y minus, uh, 1 minus y squared. I'm going to plug that in here for s because that's the area formula for an equilateral triangle, and I'm going to put that in my integral. So square root of 3 over 4 times 2 root 1 minus y squared, squared, okay, I'm just getting that area, dy. And there is our integral for the cross sections of equilateral triangles. Now, let's use the same circle, only this time we're going to use uh, cross sections that are rectangles, whose heights are 3 times their bases. So what is the base again? The base, again, is the same thing. So now what we're doing is, let me just draw it up here. We're doing a rectangle, okay, like that. So the base of the rectangle is still going to be this. Remember that the area of a rectangle is the base times the height. So the base is going to be 2 root 1 minus y squared. What is the height going to be? The height is 3 times the base. So it's going to be 3 times 2 root 1 minus y squared, okay? So we're going to have 6 root 1 minus y squared. All right, so now we're going to put the air, we're going to, we're going to put that in our integral, integral from negative 1 to 1 of 2 root 1 minus y squared times 6 root 1 minus y squared dy. We're not going to need to simplify that, we're just setting up the integral, okay? Key point here, folks, I know this was kind of a long video with a lot of examples, but the key point here is that all you're doing is taking the area of that figure and you're putting it into an integral, okay? DY is going to figure out the, uh, the, form, the volume for you, okay? Got it? Area. Known cross-sections. Later, guys.